Hello, so today's video is to show you how to make a little Peter Rabbit for the top of your cake or um, for however you want to use him, but out of icing, um, sugar paste fondant, whatever you want to call it. Now these are the tools that you'll need to make a little Peter Rabbit. I've got a large ball of very light brown um, fondant that I've added some gum trag, CMC Tylos powder to, to make it um, effectively a modelling paste to dry harder. A small ball of blue for his little coat, some white um, sugar paste fondant, some yellow, a little tiny bit of yellow and a tinier bit still of black fondant. I'm going to use a little um, acrylic rolling pin for icing. Um, any rolling pin will do but these are, these are great, they're non-stick. Um, I'm then going to be using a ball tool and a little sort of boning tool but actually you could replace those with the end of a, a, a a paintbrush and a cocktail stick if you wanted to and then um, a little a paintbrush with some water just to use as um, a sticking agent. Okay so if we move all those out of the way we're going to start with the body of Peter Rabbit and we just need I don't know a small orange size ball of the brown fondant. I'll just put that up, to, up move it out of the way tell you what okay so I'm just gonna give this a bit of a knead just to make sure that it's nice and soft and pliable and then as you can see it's got lots of sort of splits and cracks and that kind of thing in so what I'm gonna do just using my hands and a good amount of pressure I'm just gonna roll it and roll it and roll it until it gets nice and smooth just roll it it doesn't matter what shape it is inside there but just roll it until it gets nice and smooth so now you can see we've got a nice sort of funny shaped ball of smooth fondant. Now to make Peter Rabbit's body we need a little teardrop shape. So what I'm going to do is between my palms like this I'm, I'm going to apply more pressure at sort of the little finger side of my palms and just roll it like that into an upside down teardrop shape so you come out with something like that. I'm just going to put that on the on the mat so we get a flat bottom and again just give it a little roll round applying more pressure at the top than at the bottom so we've got a nice elongated teardrop with a flat bottom to sit on so we just put that to one side now we're going to make his little haunches his back legs so um, to start off with we just need a small sort of a cherry tomato sized piece of the brown fondant and again just roll that around in the palms to get a nice smooth ball and I'm just going to shape that roughly into a circle because then I'm going to take a sharp knife and, and I'm going to cut the the ball in half so that we've got two equal sized pieces so I'm just going to cut that straight down the middle put the knife to one side so we've got two equal sized pieces now again just give those a roll round in your palms to get two nice little smooth balls like that and then what we're going to do is on the palm of my hand I'm just going to use um, this part of my thumb just to flatten that down into a little circle now it doesn't have to be absolutely perfectly circular but it just gives you an idea so that's what we've done there and now what we're going to do is put those using a little bit of water on each side of Peter Rabbit's body we're going to place those on and then just sort of push them into that's sort of the back this is the front so you're putting them slightly towards the back of his body and just push them onto his body all the way around just push them on and then we'll just put that again to one side now we're going to make his feet so a smaller piece still let's give it a bit of a knead and a roll so an even smaller cherry tomato or a large grape size and again with a knife just um, straight down the middle and what we're going to do with these two pieces is make two little um, again two little tiny teardrop shapes but quite fat ones just roll that round and then two teardrop shapes so there so they're narrower towards the back 
bin at the front. Now I'm just going to take my knife and with the blunt side, so I'm using the non-cutting side, I'm just going to roll two little marks in so you can see he's now got little feet. And what we're going to do, just squash the back down a little bit because they are going to go under his body. So I'm just going to take a little bit of water and put, the, put that on the backs of those feet and then just slip those under and they need to go just where the join is. So it looks like his little feet, just where the join of, of the pieces that you've just put on. And there's a cute little, you can push them under a little bit more if you want to. And there's a, um, the start of a cute little Peter Rabbit. Now they're not easily going to stay on, they will stay on eventually and, uh, and stay on there nicely. What I'm going to do at this point is take a cocktail stick. I think this is going to be a little bit long. Oh, it might not be actually. And what I'm going to do is just move this into the centre so you can see a little bit better. But twisting all the while I'm doing it, I'm just going to place that into the top of the body. Might be a little bit long. So we can just snap the end off that and just place it straight back inside the hole that we've just created. Now the twisting just enables you to push that down into the body without actually flattening the body because we need him to be tall enough. So he's not a squat rabbit, he's quite a tall rabbit really. So now we're going to just make um, his belly for, for want of a better expression. So um, just taken a little bit, it doesn't matter the size of this so much because you can squash it as much as you need to, but probably a, a small cherry tomato size. And again, now we need to make that into a tall teardrop shape, so something like that. And then I'll just put it on the board and I'm actually going to flatten it with the sort of palm of my hand. And that, as you will see, will go onto Peter Rabbit's front. So just place that on there and you can go under his neck and then it looks that this bit will be hidden by his head. But just flatten that on all of the sides down onto his body. Now with um, a cocktail stick or the pointy end of uh, a tool like this, we're just going to draw some fur on just very roughly. I'm going to just lift this up and see if I can show you a little bit closer to the camera because white on, on white is quite difficult but just to put some marks in there to make it look like fur they don't have to be uniform because fur on a wild rabbit is not particularly uniform so you could just go over the edges and just sort of feather that into the body just to give it a sort of a look of fur okay place that back down there so I'm just going to make the head for Peter Rabbit now, which is um, it's quite difficult to describe the shape that we need, so I'm just going to have to do it step by step. Um, sorry, I've just got a little bit of blue in my... Okay, so um, I've got a piece of brown fondant, which is probably sort of small tomato sized. Again, you can decide on the size of the head that you want. You can do it bigger, smaller, it's up to you. There's no right or wrong, just what looks best. So I'm just giving this a good roll to make sure that it's all nice and uh, smooth and crease free. And then what I'm going to do is just ever so slightly make it into um, sort of a teardrop shape. So just ever so slightly, nothing too pronounced because you can end up with Peter Rabbit's head looking a bit like a weasel or a rat or it's quite difficult to, to, to get it right. So there we have um, the basic shape of his face. So I'm just going to put a little sort of indentation across his nose, sort of almost where his eyes will be. And I'm just going to use my little pinkies just to push in on either side of his head where his eyes will be. And then I'm just going to extend that just sort of teasing around the side just to almost um, thin the top of his head so that we've got a, um, 
almost sort of cheekbone bit. So there's a little step down if you can see that. I don't know whether you can see that. Okay, so just keep uh, keep doing that because as we go along, the shape of the head will change as we put some pressure on. So that, but that's the basic shape of his head. Um, we don't want a pointy nose because he doesn't have a pointy nose. So just flatten that off and just sort of keep shaping it until you're happy with that. So now we will put the um, we we'll do the eyes, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this um, ball tool. It's the smallest ball tool that I've got, but if you haven't got one of these, then the end of a, a paintbrush will do. I'm just going to put in, just push a little hole, just wiggle it to make it a little bit bigger if needs be. Push a little hole in both sides. I'm doing this left-handed so I don't get in the way of the camera. And then I'm just going to take either a toothpick or my, my pointy tool and just elongate that a little bit at either end because a rabbit's eye sockets aren't uh, sort of perfectly round like that. So just elongate both bits so that when your eye's in there you can just sort of see a little a little line. Again, play with that until you're happy. Now I'm going to take my little tiny bit of black fondant and roll it into a nice little ball, cut it in half so we've got two equal sized pieces, roll those again into a little ball and now we just place those ever so gently in the eye sockets and then you haven't got bulging eyes because rabbits and bulging eyes don't go well together. Okay so um, I'm just going to take a tiny little piece of white because we're going to do some little flecks on the eyes Now I think I've taken too much so I'm just going to discard half of that and this is the tiniest little fleck of white again cut that in half so that you know you've got two equal sizes and just roll those into two tiny little balls and they're just the little sort of flecks on his eyes just stick those on there and there's his eyes okay so for his little nose detail first of all I'm going to take um, the end of my sharp knife first of all I'm going to do the bit that runs sort of down the middle of his nose I'm just going to check where that is and right in the middle just going to put in a little a little line like that can you see and then for his mouth um, he's not a very happy character this one so we just put one little indent there and mirror that on the other side and then for his nose pointing upwards this time we're just going to do the same on both sides so there we have the markings for his little nose Again, if you've done any squashing while you've been handling his little face, then just uh, see if you can reshape that now. So just to fill in these little cheek areas, I'm going to take a little tiny bit of the white fondant, not massive, and just cut that. That wasn't very, very, very in half. So I'm just going to cut that in half again this is a trial and error you just need to see how much you need because you don't want too much on either side of here in fact I think I'm going to try it with half of that again um, so we just need two tiny little balls of white flatten those down on your surface just to make them a little bit sort of bigger and what we're after is a little it doesn't have to be perfectly circular, you'll see why in a minute because we're going to actually change the shape of it. So just place that in that, oh, doesn't want to play the ball, game, ball, play the game, play ball. Um, so just place that in the, the little sort of cheek space that we've made. I've just flattened the top of his head there which is not helpful. Um, and again just with this one, there we go. It's a bit better. I'm just going to place that on the other side and then with your your, your little pointy tool or your uh, toothpick, it doesn't matter, I'm just going to, like we did for the little body on Peter Rabbit, I'm just going to drag, it's a little bit more pronounced on this bit because this is actually supposed to look as if it's part of his face, so I'm just going to drag the, the white ever so gently, doesn't matter if it starts going a little bit see-through because it's supposed to be a little patch of white fur. So we've just 
done that on one side and I shall do the other side while trying not to squash his head. Just you can see that sort of feathers it into the the fur to make it look less like a blob of white and more like a patch of white fur. There we are. Now we have Peter Rabbit's little white bits. Now you might want to just make the little nose more pronounced by just pushing in the very end there. The oh, what I'm going to do is just uh, just going to mark with a, a cocktail stick. I'm just going to mark the top of the head where I think the ears are going to stick in. So just put little holes in there, little guide holes. They're, they'll be covered up if they're not quite right. But some just some little guide holes in the top for his ears. To make the ears, again, this is trial and error. I mean, some people like tall, thin ears. Some people like short, fat ears. So it's it's up to you what you want to do um, and how big you want to make them. But I'm just going to show you the basis of some good ears. So again, sort of a large cherry tomato. Once again, cut that in half. And then long, thin teardrops is what we're after. Um, Actually, we, we're sort of after, it's a different shape because it's thinner at one end, uh, thinner at both ends, sorry. So I'm, I'm actually going to roll this in the palm of my hand with equal pressure on both sides and just backwards and forwards like that, just so you kind of get a, I don't know, a long rugby ball shape perhaps. And we'll try the same with this one. I've got a nice smooth ball there and then right in the middle of my palms, and just placing equal pressure backwards and forwards and we come out with a long rugby ball shape. Now again, we need these to be flatter. So I'm just going to use my thumb to flatten those out, which actually um, makes quite a, quite a nice indent in them as well. So these are going to be sort of um, quite nice chunky ears. So we decide which end is the um, the pointier end so these two look like the pointier ends you can make them a little bit more pointy so what I'm going to do is just cut off the very bottom to make of each ear just to make that flat so it can go against his head and then with your cocktail stick or your pointy tool I'm just going to draw two little lines up from the bottom I'll do that again on this one so you can see. So two little lines up from the bottom. And then what we need to do is just pinch the bottom end in a little bit. As you can see, that makes quite a nice little ear shape. Now you can, if you want to, get some mustard dust, um, some, maybe some pink, and just put that on the inside. That would look quite nice. Um, so with these ears, you're going to need um, a cocktail stick or some... Uh, dried spaghetti that works quite nicely as well but for the ears I'm just going to put these on a little cocktail stick each because we need to stick when they're dry we need to stick those on the head so if you can see I'm just putting that in the bottom this is why you need to keep them chunky because you're putting a, a stick up through the middle if they were really thin you'd struggle to do this so I'm just twisting as I go as far into the ear without it coming out the other end as possible so once again pointy end and I'm going to put that in the middle and just twist it. I'm twisting it as we go as far up as I dare. And there are the ears. Now they're going to go, obviously, into Peter Rabbit's head. So I'm just going to, if you have a little look, have the head facing you. Um, and I'm just going to, I'll try and do it facing you. Obviously, it's facing away from me. But what I'm going to do is just measure where I want the ears to go. And just I've, I've actually put I've just sort of marked a tiny little mark on there with both of those as a guesstimate as to where that's going to go. And I'm going to take another um, toothpick and a uh, cocktail stick and just push down into the head to mark the holes where I think they're going to go. And then I can try with these ears putting them in there. Now you may get to this point and think, hmm, those ears are too big for the size of the head. Or they're too small, or they're too fat, or they're not fat enough. Um, but it's just, it's trial and error. 
it's what what you like the look of um, so that's where they're going to sit and what I'm going to do is just sort of bend one of them over slightly because I like a bit of a non-symmetrical bunny ear so I'm going to take those out lay those to one side and put the head back over here and next we're going to work on Peter's little coat now for this we need a sort of a funny shape <laughs> um, so I'm just going to roll this piece of blue and it's probably a uh, small tomato size just going to roll it into a bit of a sausage and then using my rolling pin flatten it out a little bit and then make it a bit longer so we're looking for enough enough of the the blue material to go round Peter Rabbit now it doesn't have to be deep because obviously his legs are going to get in the way so I'm just going to cut a nice flat line across the top and then I'm going to cut a nice flat line across the bottom now I know from experience that what we need is I'm going to try and do this upside down so you can see so this is the top this is the bottom and I'm going to cut it at an angle on both ends I don't think we'll need that much but we'll it's better to leave yourself too much than too little so there we have a um, I don't know what what sort of shape it is rhomboid I'm not sure um, it's a long time since I was at school learning my shape so just going to pick that up really carefully and I'm going to drape that around Peter Rabbit now I think that's it's still it's a little bit too um, too wide so I'm just going to cut a little bit off the bottom I think it's quite a nice length but it was just too wide so we'll try try that again so it sits above his little legs well that's quite nice but you don't want too much at the top here so just sort of squash that in a little bit now that sits quite nicely and what I'm going to do I'm just going to fold these corners back to sort of make a little a little collar on his jacket which is always quite nice so he looks quite dapper there we go now Peter Rabbit has little yellow buttons so I'm just going to take some of this yellow and I shall cut it into four now I only really need three I might not even need three because it's it, there's not a lot of space on there but I'm gonna in the interest of getting them all an equal shape I'm gonna cut four and discard one so we'll discard that one so I've got three tiny little blobs of yellow and I'll start by putting one in the middle now these may even get covered up by his arms but the details are there and it's nice to have them there and they're on display if possible so there's the first one put the other one I'll put the water on ready the other one right at the top and and the final one just at the bottom and you can see things stick quite nicely just with some water so there we are so now we need to um, I'm such a messy decorator I leave little piles of stuff all over the place so now we need to make his little arms um, which obviously include his little paws at the end as well so this is how much uh, blue I've got left from that first piece so I'm just going to cut that in half I don't know whether we'll need all of that but now for this for his arms very very simply just some elongated um, teardrops again long thin ones so there's one and there's another now as you practice more it's, it's dead easy to make these little shapes and what I'm going to do just with the end of my finger it's quite easy to do just stick, just push in the bottom of there just to make a little indentation in the bottom now it looks like a little sort of sleeve gathering at the bottom of his um, where his hands are, his little paws are going to come out so I'm just going to take a little ball of the light brown I don't think I'll need that much so oops wants to come on anyway so we've got a small grape sized piece just cut that in half and add a little bit of water to the bottom of each of those and 
again, it's not crucial because they're just going to sit in the bottom of his sleeve, but I'm just going to make tiny little teardrops. Tiny little teardrops. Again, like we did for the feet, I'm just going to put in some little paw marks because it's nice to have the details on there. But basically, you now need to... I'm just going to indent that a little bit more with a ball tool. If you haven't got one, it doesn't matter so much. That's getting a little bit stuck to put some water on. But then I'm just going to place, place the hand in there. Literally, just place it. It doesn't have to stick too hard. And then... Um, we need to just put some water on each side of Peter's little body and they're quite a nice length actually so well done and put the other one this is what I mean about the buttons getting covered up by the arm but you can still see the buttons underneath it's nice to have that detail on there so that doesn't quite reach around his fat little tummy so that's good that's lovely you can put anything in between there if you want. You could have him holding a, a carrot or a number for a birthday cake or whatever, but that's that's quite a nice little finishing off. So the point of this now is you need to leave these to dry a little bit longer than I actually have, but I'll just put it together to show you the finished model. So there's his head. Now you can have it facing any way you like, forward, slightly sideways, a bit jaunty. And then we're just going to place the ears back in the top. And again, if you're going to have leave those to dry a little bit more. Thank you so much for watching another cake decorating tutorial from Mrs B Bakes. I really hope you liked it and found it useful. If you did, please leave a thumbs up. Um, even better, subscribe to my channel. Um, it's completely free of charge, no uh, catches, and uh, you'll be the first to hear about any new videos that I put onto YouTube. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.